Hey, my name's Hugh, and this video we're gonna go into why extract chilling and volatile compounds in particular, before we build on this understanding throughout the next few videos. So let's start off going back to 2019, when I tasted my first uh, expression of eugenoidus. This is the straight natural process. Now, it had perceivably very low acid, but the biggest and most startling quality, apart from its sweetness, was the flavor profile. Now, this flavor was very savory. We often had seaweed, we had blue cheese, we had grassiness, rice pudding, um, a lot of these different qualities. And then there were these subtle hints of fruity qualities in amongst that coffee. The balance was very off. It was a lot of sweetness, no bitterness, almost no acidity. So it's a very strange experience of espresso. So naturally being a little curious, I wanted to understand why it tasted this way. So Sash and I have worked with Zurich University with San Remo coffee machines. Uh, so we decided to do some research and go a little bit deeper into why the species was so different. Now, as you can see here on this graph, you'll notice that there are different coffee species. Now you'll notice with Arabica, we have a lot higher chlorogenic acid, so the, in the orange, uh, we have a lot higher of that comparing with the eugenoides right there in the middle. Now this chlorogenic acid is a big reason why UG is so sweet and we have that really low perception of acidity. So my first thought was possibly the lack of acidity was a reason why uh, we weren't getting these fruity flavors. So we don't have that chlorogenic acid which provides that foundation for the other fruity acids to build upon. So my first theory was that possibly this coffee is not very fruity because it doesn't have enough acidity to really bring that out. So if you think about roasting a coffee over a really long time, we know we break down organic acids and we essentially eventually kill that fruit flavor. So some of the first few things I was trying was adding acids to the espresso to see if it would unlock things. Well, it didn't. I tried also adding magnesium to espressos, didn't unlock fruit flavors. So it became pretty clear that acidity wasn't the culprit. So Professor Chahan explained to me, there's a broad range of volatile aroma compounds, but what's really important is that the balance is right so that we can taste those fruity flavors. So as an example, some compounds can be above threshold of what a human can taste. Some can be just below that threshold. And as a result, we may not taste a certain flavor profile. So essentially those fruit driven flavor compounds were there in Euhonoidus, yet the balance was slightly off. So the choice back then was to start blending coffees into it to see if we could unlock what was sort of just beneath the surface and what you could smell on the coffee. So the first thing I tried was adding a really beautiful, high quality, high grown wash geisha with amazing acidity. Now the acidity brought better balance, and by adding more and more and more, we did find some citrus notes being brought out, but they were still outweighed by the savory elements. So like your, your seaweed, your grassiness, some nuttiness. Um, so it wasn't quite as transformative as I'd hoped. But the next thing we tried was getting a carbonic natural geisha, a really high quality fruit driven carbonic natural geisha. So I started with one gram in the espresso, and I kept adding more one gram, one gram, one gram until we started to see that flavor shift. And it was quite amazing at around 3.5 grams, it was completely transformative. 3.5 grams of an 18 gram dose turned a coffee from savory to pure tropical fruit. It was passion fruit, it was guava, very, very dominant, very distinct flavor profile. Now what was amazing is these flavors, they weren't dominant or very present in the two coffees by themselves. And then if I went from 3.5 grams down to three grams, I wouldn't taste maybe the passion fruit note. It's like you were switching the flavor on or off. So it's pretty clear here that volatile aroma compounds, just tiny changes around the right areas, can be the difference between us experiencing a characteristic or not experiencing at all. So volatile aroma compounds are key and small changes make big differences. So in the next video, I wanna go a little bit deeper, explain the difference between volatile aroma compounds and non-volatile compounds. 
before we move deeper into extract chilling.